Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to World of Warcraft, the Burning Crusade Classic, and our Tauren Warrior playthrough. We are still in Dustwall Marsh today, we have a lot of stuff we can finish up in the southern part of the zone. So, we're hopping a flight down to Mud Sprocket right now. While we do that, a couple of changes. Uh, thanks so much Dan Cosman for sending along the green tower shield. You actually sent this a long time ago, and I just somehow didn't see it. Same thing with Gazlo's Charm, a new neck piece for us. Both of these, pretty good upgrades. I like the equip bonus on the shield. When struck in combat, has a 1% chance of raising a thorny shield. That inflicts 3 nature damage to the attackers when hit. And increases nature resist. Also enchanted with an additional 18 stamina on top of the 13 that it already has. So yeah, very awesome. Thank you so much. Pretty cool looking shield. Another item that I have never seen before. And I like seeing items that I've never seen before. Uh, other stuff, I went ahead and leveled up our first aid, so we were able to use our books. We're at 222 out of 225. And we now have Mage Weave bandages, which are going to be able to heal us uh, for a fair amount. 800 over 8 seconds. Also got a bunch of superior healing potions. Thank you guys for sending those along. Uh, these are going to heal 700 to 900, so much better than the potions that we were using previously. All right, so much to do here, so much to do. Let's just head out. I want to go towards these Firemane Ashtails and Firemane Scouts, and we'll kind of start chipping away at them. That's what we'll do first. That's going to be just over to the north here. hope you guys are all doing well today. It is the holiday weekend, so I do have a lot of stuff going on. Haven't been able to play as much recently as I would like to uh, because of the holiday. But yeah, it's been good. Hope you guys are having a good holiday as well. Whatever form that takes, whether you're staying at home or having to work. Maybe you're out somewhere. I hope you're having a good time at it. And that all as well. Uh, we've got a little buddy here. And from the whelps, we're going to need searing hearts and searing tongues. There's a searing tongue. So it looks like we can get inside of here. I don't know the best way to do that, but we probably should look at trying. Let's come over here, maybe. I'm kind of feeling like for the immediate future, I am going to very much be focusing on the warrior and on the, on the priest. It's kind of going to become my focus for the time being. I'm still really having a lot of fun on the shaman. I am going to level that character up, but I think for now, I'm going to focus warrior and priest. Uh, because I really, really want to get the warrior into Outland, and I would really like to get the priest to a point where we can start doing some level 70 content. Getting into some heroic runs, and uh, getting a taste of that before we are in Wrath. And we have a lot of time. We do have a lot of time. Uh, because I'm pretty sure there's no chance that we see Wrath of the Lich King until late September, maybe, maybe early October. That's at the earliest. I, I could easily see it coming out in like mid to late November, uh, and that being absolutely fine. So yeah, we do have an entire summer 
and part of an autumn to kind of get characters leveled up, get them where we want them to be. There's probably going to be plenty of time to do the warrior, the priest, and the shaman. But for now, I do want to kind of focus my efforts and uh, dial things in a little bit. Jumping back into the priest was kind of a spontaneous thing, but uh, it had been on my mind for a long time, uh, wanting to get into that character and get it transferred over somewhere useful. Uh, because again, I have hundreds and hundreds of hours put into that character that were leveled through Vanilla Classic, which took a lot longer to level than TBC. Uh, and I've been having a lot of fun on it with the addition of Questy and Immersion. It's like playing a different, uh, a different game, essentially. So even though that was spontaneous, I'm really digging it. I really do want to get that character to 70 and uh, see what healing heroics is like. And I really need the warrior to get into Outland as well because I think that is going to be a, a lot of fun to get the warrior into, into Outland and be able to do that horde questing on the warrior uh, as I remember it from all the way back when BC launched and getting my warrior into Outland. Also a Torn Warrior, so yeah, should be a lot of nostalgia, a lot of good times. But the Shaman will not be forgotten. Uh, you know, as soon as we get the Priest to 70, I'll probably start carving some time out again for the Shaman. Maybe here and there I'll do like a nighttime, a nighttime video or a weekend video. Because it is an enormously fun class that I didn't expect to have as much fun on it as I do. The only downside of it is that it's on the Alliance side of things, and, and we can't do as many dungeons as I would want. Once I get it into Outland, you know, that's no longer a problem. But that's gonna take some time, and yeah. Uh, Warrior Priest right now. I hope you guys are enjoying both the Warrior and the Priest playthroughs. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of enemies down here right now, but we do have an objective in the middle to click on. Mock Maroc's Snuffbox. So let's see if we can work our way to that. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Here is the box. It's more like a barrel. Yeah, besides that, not a lot of enemies down here. And not a lot of good pathing options to get into the other part of the area. It's uh, a lot of pikes and broken down fencing in our way. A lot of rubble. Let's try to get through here. Maybe, we, maybe this will be a way around. Got a feeling that to get everything we need out of these guys, we're going to be here for quite a while, at least farming the Searing Whelps. Uh, these Fireman guys, you know, we only need 10 scouts. 
10 scouts, 10 ash tails, and 5 scale banes. So no, we're, we're going to be here for a while. Which is fine. These guys are pretty easy to take on. Haven't even had to use one of our newfangled bandages yet. I am going to try to remember to skin most of these guys. It's extremely convenient sticking with the sword and board. The amount of times that we can just interrupt people with shield bash uh, really easily and just prevent that incoming damage is amazing. It makes me basically never want to wield the two-hander. I mean, I think we get pummel at some point. Maybe we already got pummel. Pretty sure that's a second interrupt for us that we can use with a two-hander. Yeah, here we go. Oh, requires berserker stance. Yeah, I never use berserker stance, but, you know, that's good to know. I guess if we wanted to do a two-hander, we could we could live in Berserker stance, but uh, that's usually not how I play. Even when I have a two-hander out, I'm usually in arm stance. And by arm stance, I mean battle stance. Just because that way we don't take the additional damage. Obviously, there are some abilities that we can't use in battle stance. I believe Whirlwind is one of them. Yeah, I think I, I think I just prefer the sword and board, or the one hand. It doesn't have to be a sword, it could be a mace, it could be an axe, I suppose, but uh, I do prefer having a shield. Looking at the level for stuff in Uldaman and Maradon, it feels like we still have a few levels to go before we can do any more dungeons. Been really, really wanting to do a dungeon, especially with all the awesome gear that we have now, but uh, last boss in Uldaman is level 47, and then all the gear that comes out of Maradon is equipped at level 48. And I kind of learned my lesson about going to places where you can't even equip the armor. It really sucks to get an awesome new piece of gear and then it has to sit in your bag for like four or five levels because you came in really underleveled and got carried by a group. Not really an optimal experience for me, especially as a tank. I want to go in there when we're a high level for the for the content and not when we're underleveled for it. So I am holding off, unfortunately. Like I said, would love to do more dungeons, but Mara and Uldaman are the next group that we can do. And we still have quite a ways to go before we're going to be doing any of that stuff. I mean, you could be farming Scarlet Monastery at this point if you really, really wanted to. Um, it'd probably be good for kill experience. I don't know how much gear is actually in there for people that don't equip mail <laughs> and don't need, like, warrior weapons. I, I, you know, there's some caster stuff from uh, Library. But as far as Cathedral goes, it'd probably be like good, a good way to farm experience, especially if you had a lot of rested ex XP. You can get in there and just run it back to back a handful of times. And that would probably be fun. Not really what I'm into these days. There, there was a time in life when I would definitely just farm dungeons and, the, you know, by Wrath of the Lich King, that kind of became a way you could level up. 
What really enabled you to level up that way was the automated group finder. <laughs> I remember leveling a bunch of alts in Wrath uh, with a friend of mine, and we would just go into the looking for dungeon finder, and we'd level that way. It was really nice to level that way with the recruiter friend bonus, if you guys remember the original recruiter friend, uh, recruiter friend XP bonus. Uh, that was a really, really quick way to level. And then, you know, one of you got free levels out of it that you can hand out to a different character. Like, you know, you just stand there and let your buddy ding your character up. That was a fun summer. Got a bunch of level 80s that year. And the other cool thing about the automated group finder was that eventually it like incentivized you towards certain roles so it would offer a bonus for tanks or a bonus for healers, whatever was in like really short supply at that time. You'd get a bonus for queuing up that way. And if we're taking the automated looking for group system out, uh, then you're not going to have those same incentives. You're not going to have the incentive for like lower, uh, lower population roles, so lack of healers and tanks. And then you're not going to get the daily, the bonus experience that you would get from the dungeons either by taking that tool out of the game. So I hope they find a way to, if they're not going to do the automated group finder that teleports you to the instance, forms the group for you. I hope that whatever they do will help address the lack of healers and tanks. They really need to find ways to incentivize people to fill those roles, especially while leveling. You know, especially while doing the leveling dungeons. Incentivizing somebody who's like leveling up as like an elemental shaman or a balanced druid, just incentivize them to go heals because right now the Q needs healers and you can get a bonus for it. Same thing with tanks. Incentivize those rat pallies and those arms warriors who like otherwise wouldn't really think of tanking. You incentivize those people with really short wait times and with a bonus. And then look, suddenly you have tanks and healers. It's amazing. But if you don't have that in the game, then you're kind of still in the same situation that we are in now, where there aren't a lot of tanks and healers. Uh, there just aren't. Especially not in leveling content. I feel like people who are going to primarily play tanks and healers, they tend to roll those up immediately. That, that's your first character that you roll up. So after that first wave of leveling, if you're going to roll an alt after that, you're probably going to roll a DPS. And then in that wave of leveling is when we start seeing the shortage of tanks and healers. So the fairy fire that we're reducing the armor, that's the proc off of our sword, right? It decreased the armor of the target. It's funny that it doesn't have its own named debuff, but that they use the fairy fire debuff for it. Decreases armor by 100, cannot stealth or turn invisible. I kept wondering what that animation was when our character raises their hand up like they're casting a spell, and it's literally us casting fairy fire from the proc on our longsword. Which apparently procs very often. Three times in that fight. We don't need any more Ash Tails. We need two more scouts, and we need to find these Scalebane guys. Where are the Scalebane? Hmm. Scalebane may be over here to our to our west, so we'll go check that out.
Uh, even though we need two different items from these guys, the drop rate is not very good. Not very good. Uh, what are you? You are an Ashtail. We don't need any more of you. Let's try to bypass this guy. You are another Ashtail. Here is a scout. We do need two more of these guys. Let's take him out here. Let's hit a Mage Wee Bandage, it'll be the first one that we've used. And yeah, that, that does a decent amount. So we, we want to use it when we're down about a third of our health and then it'll mostly get it all back, that's good. Glad to have that leveled up. Ah, uh, the Den of Flame we've discovered. Okay. This is where we're gonna find some more scouts and then the five scale bane that we need. Alright, we don't need you, we don't need any more scouts. Uh, but we're gonna have to fight through some scouts anyway, I think. We gotta get over here, maybe. And we're also trying to click on a couple of things. We have Mach Maroc's Grog over here we need to get to. Not really seeing that just yet. We'll probably have to clear the Ashtail to our right as well. These guys must have like either an immediate fire shield they're casting, or maybe they have an innate fire shield that uh, they don't have to cast. Perhaps they just get that for being fire main guys. That would make a lot of sense. And I haven't been paying enough attention to see if they are actually casting it or not. Yeah, they just have an innately fire shield. Hmm. That's cool. And here is the Grog. Strongbox is somewhere south of us, but it could be in here, right? I'm kind of thinking that maybe it's going to be inside this cave. Yeah, the Scalebane are going to be in here as well. So let's clear the place out. Use some retaliation here just for funsies. We probably don't actually need it. Uh, but I do need to remember that I have these things down to a 20 minute cooldown, so it was a half hour cooldown, we talented a little bit, and it is now a 20 minute cooldown, so all the reason to use them a little bit more often than perhaps that we're used to. Didn't quite get that charge off like I wanted to.
So somebody explained to me that using Mortal Strike might become beneficial because unlike Heroic Strike, using Mortal Strike does not use up an auto attack. So you can get an auto attack and get your Mortal Strike in. So I can see that maybe over time, like maybe in longer fights especially, having Mortal Strike uh, prioritized over Heroic Strike would probably be good. It costs a lot more rage to do uh, Mortal Strike though. I think, like I said before, it'll probably be a lot more useful to us once we've been able to dump a bunch of points into improved Mortal Strike just to make it deal more base damage. Uh, then it will probably be worth uh, prioritizing a lot more over our Heroic Strike. But yeah, I appreciated that explanation. I kind of knew that and then forgot that, yeah, Mortal Strike does go off on the next on the next swing. And then so Mortal Strike is going to be an ability outside of the auto attack. But yeah, good to know. And uh, we'll definitely start using it more. I just think it's going to be better with those extra points into it. So somewhere right around this corner, we're going to be looking for the strong box. Okay, yep, I actually see it right there. Should have looked first, but yeah, there it is. And yeah, what else are we needing? We need blood fen feathers. I'm not really sure what that's referring to. Is that something that we're supposed to be clicking on in here that I'm missing? Or is that something outside? I really can't tell. Um... It's got to be something outside. I don't think it's anything in here that we can click on or anything like that. Could be from like the raptors walking around on top of the barrow den perhaps. Yeah, I think that's what it must be. Let's cl try to climb up top here. And uh, we'll see about getting the blood fen feathers that we need. Just gotta fight our way out of this barrow den. Immediately getting dismounted, that's a, that's a good way to start. Let's just kill this guy.
All right, here are the raptors. We need five feathers, which probably means the drop rate is not going to be outstanding. Oh good, these raptors also have disarm. I I hate raptors that have disarm. I, I almost don't really understand how they can disarm us. Uh being raptors and all. I guess they could like slash at our wrist with their with their with their claws, but really don't appreciate the disarming. Let's move a little bit further to the west here. Hopefully we'll find uh, some bigger groups. Uh, here we go, there's a few. Oh yeah, yeah, this is good right here. Perfect, perfect. I can see about five or six of them, so that's good. And hey, whoa, I was not uh, paying attention to our level there. That is level 42 that we just hit. That's perfect. We could go another point into Blood Frenzy. That'll be two out of two. That's going to make our Rend and our Deep Wound abilities also increase all physical damage to the target by 4%. So yeah, definitely want to go into that. I think we're going to have to spend two more points somewhere. Uh, we might come back up and grab Sword Specialization again, since we have been primarily using Swords. Uh, that being said, we could grab a point in the second wind. We're just, we don't get stunned a lot or immobilized a lot, but it could be useful for those times when we do. Uh, I'm thinking of like basilisk and stuff that stun us. There are certain things that will like cast earth grab on us, but yeah, the goal is to get down into improved mortal strike.
I'm kind of wondering if, like, beyond the last patch of TBC, if they're going to do any kind of events or any kind of, like, maybe small patch to kind of incentivize people to come back to the game prior to Wrath coming out um, later in the year. Don't really know what they could do. Uh, but it would be nice to see them do something to kind of uh, bring people back. And there's already a lot of people playing, especially if you're on a high population or a full server. There are tons of people playing. Uh, that's one of the main questions I get asked is like, how are the servers? Do you see other people? And yeah, it's not like it's not like retail. Like, if you're on a high pop server, you're gonna see other people a lot of the time. Um, in most zones, I'd say this is kind of a zone that not a lot of people quest in. So yeah, we don't see as many people in Dustwallow Marsh. It's just a zone that not a lot of people seem to do. Uh, but in a lot of zones, people are very active. Even having 13 people here in the middle of the day on a Sunday, on a holiday weekend, I think is pretty impressive. It is Memorial Day weekend, so I think a lot of people are probably out uh, doing things in the outside world where the sun is scorching their skin and irradiating their cells and all that fun outside stuff. I love the outside until it gets to be about 78 degrees. Once we pass about 78 degrees, uh, then I kind of become really, really heat intolerant. And it's like, I can endure it once I'm out in it, but the thought of going out into it uh, is often the, the big struggle. And it's like seasonal eff effectiveness disorder, but I, I kind of get more affected by it in the summer when it gets hot. I kind of, uh... I have a tendency to try to stay inside as much as I can once it gets really hot out, which is not always the healthiest habit to have as a human being, but... So far, the places that I've lived in life have uh, gotten hot this time of year. Yeah, I should probably live somewhere like Alaska. If I had my way, the hottest temperature I would have to tolerate would probably be 76 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be my ideal hottest days of summer, <laughs> would, would get into the high 70s. And I would be more than happy with that. Okay, we've got what we need here, uh, as far as the parts from the raptors, but I noticed that we have Goreclaw the Ravenous. Doesn't look like a elite or group quest, so let's, let's head over to it and uh, see if we can take this guy out. Uh, we clearly should have been fighting our way back here the entire time. Because if we want to get the Goreclaw the Ravenous, we are going to have to fight a lot of little raptors. So, let's start by coming over here and taking on these two. Uh, somehow we only got the one. I thought for sure they were going to pull together. Maybe because we're a, we're a bit of a higher level and they're green, we didn't get this guy here. I'll take it. Looks like we're going to avoid the pad as well. I thought for sure we'd get the pad, but no, we have avoided the in initial guy and the pad. We're kind of sandwiched in. It's a little bit scary. Maybe we will have to take out some of these guys anyway. What I would hate to have happen is I I'd hate to have this thing have a mechanic where it calls for help. And I, I don't know if it does, uh, but boy, that could end us really quickly. We've got... Four minutes left on Retaliation. I'm going to clear a few more of these guys out. I I'm not really that comfortable with where we're at, so... Let's fight a couple more of these guys. And the one that's moving around, too, we probably ought to get him. Maybe this is okay. Maybe we're fine like this. I am going to pull him back here a little bit. And fight him over this way. He's uh, absolutely enormous.
But he doesn't do a lot of damage, honestly. Oh, we, we did get a buddy here. I did not even notice, but we did pull this extra. Alright, let's get out of here. We do need to head back over to the east. We need to get the rest of our Searing Tongues and Searing Hearts, so let's go try to do that. I kind of thought there would be whelps over here as well, but there weren't any, so we do have to go back to the east to get those. Not as many of these guys as I would like to see. And some of them are like actually inside the compound. That seemed like a little bit of ability lag. They're not sure what caused that. We're at 16 MS, so we definitely should not be having any ability lag. It looks like we can kind of come out further to the east, and as we do so, we'll be able to pick up these worm tongue plants on the ground, and we should be finding more searing whelps. So yeah, we don't have to fight them right around the fire main compounds. We can kind of come over here a bit and get our distance from the fire main guys since we don't need them anymore. We missed with that shield bash. That was unfortunate. And to our left here, we could take a look at what the worm tail looks like. I think if we had herbalism, we'd probably be able to track it.
I'm probably going to miss a bunch of these because they're a little bit hard for my eyes to pick up. Unless I'm like super focusing on scanning all the parts of my screen. Uh, what I need to do is make sure that I'm not staring too intently at the minimap markers. Uh, it's going to cause me to miss some things in the actual world. I noticed that we uh, we broke 3,000 HP. Very nice. Kind of want to go grab this because I was targeting it, but yeah, he's literally standing on top of it. I don't really appreciate it, but uh, I did come over here first, so guess we're just gonna have to give that one up. Oh, here here we go. There's one right around the corner. I just don't know how numerous these are, but yeah, look, another player, and they're doing the same quest that we are. So you know, there are people playing. Even in zones that don't get a lot of traffic. Um, well, I see a lot of crocodiles that I don't want to deal with, that's true. It looks like we're done with the whelps now, we just need- well, maybe. No, we still need... Two hearts and one tongue. Here, we'll stand on top of this to mark it as our own. That seems to be the vernacular we need to use to communicate with people here. Alright, we need one more heart from those guys and then we won't need any more of them. Still need a bunch of worm tail though. Did not want to fight you, Sir Crocodile. You are simply slowing us down at this point. Stopping me from getting to items before this druid is getting to them. Which is kind of annoying. To me, there's always that, like, dual nature about World of Warcraft while you're out questing. It's like, yeah, I love seeing other players doing stuff. I really like the feeling that the world is actually populated by people. But, at the same time, it sucks when you have to fight for spawns and fight for items and stuff like that. I understand that's obviously part of it, but... Yeah. That's kind of one of the cool things about retail is that, like, you know, we could both grab the item and it could count for both of us. I don't, I don't agree with the sharing the mobs. I feel like you tag a mob, that's your mob. Uh, you shouldn't, no, someone shouldn't be able to come up, put a little bit of damage into an enemy, and then be able to loot it for quest items. I don't agree with that. But I think the clickable stuff in the world, I think we should just be able to share that stuff. To me, that would be the ideal balance between the two. Uh, okay. Sure.
Okay, here are the last two Wormtail we need, and then we just have to get lucky with a drop off of one of the whelps. Hey, there we go. Perfect. Anything else we can do? No, we we have a clear map <laughs> for the first time in a long time. We have cleared all of our objectives that we uh, currently have ongoing here. Let's run back to town and we will start turning them in. Probably not a good idea to try to run through all six of these guys and expect anything but to get instantly dismounted and then quickly murdered. Uh, we'll see if maybe we can keep going here. We, we could do a, a fear if we get 25 rage, which if we keep getting hit, we're going to get 25 rage pretty quickly. There we go. We'll get rid of some of these guys. And we'll just keep going. Yep. We're not going to stop or look back. Okay, we'll look back. Looks like we've dropped everything. Eventually, we'll be out of combat. Eventually. Gonna be a little bit more smart and avoid some of the larger camps here. Level 42 means it's time to train some more skills as well, so I think today I'm gonna fly myself up to Thunder Bluff. I think we have a quest that, like, breadcrumbs to Thunder Bluff as well that we need to follow up on. So I will do that and make sure that we learn our level 42 skills today after, uh, after, I rec after the recording. I think we're going to take a break here. I'm going to hold off on picking any of these up. We will pick them up, but we'll just pick them up next time. I don't want to read them now and then take a break. And then, you know, we don't really know uh, what we're focusing on for next time. So we'll let those sit there for the time being. Let's come up to Brackenwall Village and get those turned in as well. And then, yeah, we'll turn everything in. I will take us to Thunder Bluff, and then next time we'll be back here. And I think we're just going to keep going with Dust Swallow Marsh. I, uh, we'll, we'll pick up everything in both the camps, and we'll we'll figure out what the plan of attack is. Uh, if I'm looking at our quest log, basically everything in Stranglethorn is green. I kind of worry about things like the Blood Scalp Ears. I need to go get one Blood Scalp Ear because... 
Yeah, it might suck to lose that. It's level 35. We're gonna lose it soon. Hmm. It sucks that we're so close, you know, that we just didn't get that last one to get it turned in. Uh, so maybe we will head back there. Maybe that's the plan. Maybe I let some of this stuff sit. It's not a very high level either. But maybe we do need to spend an hour or so back in Stranglethorn just to wrap up some of our green stuff there. I'll think about it, and then I'll make a decision because, yeah, we have a bunch of stuff that's going to be really easy to knock out at this point. And there's not really a good reason why we shouldn't do it now before it all goes gray. Hmm. I feel like the quests here also give, like, really good experience for their level brackets. Oh, uh, you killed many of the Black Dragon army. You are Brave Torrent. I'm not reading a lot of these because they're all written in, like, ogre speak, and I, I don't really care for how they make the ogre sound, to be honest. With the hearts and tongues of scorched offspring of the Black Dragon army, I can decipher what wretched beast introduced her spawn into our home. Perhaps with a greater knowledge of our aggressors, we can seek to destroy them once and for all and reclaim Stonewall Village from the ruin. Of course, convincing Mach Marak to move his lethargic fat mass out of this muckhole is going to be an epic quest in and of itself. "'Twas a perilous affair, no doubt, collecting all of these hearts and tongues. I shall delve into the depths of of the arcane to trace the origin of the black menace which has descended upon our former home. He's the only one that talks appropriately, so we'll read his stuff. And uh, he's doing something here. He's doing some kind of magical divination or casting. We'll kind of see where this goes. The, b the brood of Anixia. Okay, yeah, that's that's something. Stonewall Village was invaded by the brood of Anixia, but why would the daughter of the Black Dragon Lord Deathwing descend upon our lands? This is most troubling. Surely Anixia was driven here for, for a purpose beyond laying siege to a small band of ogres. Notify Mokmarok at once. Action must be taken. Alright. Sure he's not going to want to do much. You leave me alone now. Go tell Drazilb we stay here. No black dragon here. Alright, he's not gonna want to hear that. Well, if I could go the right way, you know, that would help. The lazy coward, Mokmarok displayed strength when Rexar was our leader, but soon after Rexar's departure, Mokmarok fell prey to the temptation of power. Rather than lead, he demanded. He does not serve his people, but rather expects us to serve him. Something must be done. Anixia's brood has been scattered across the dragon market. It is imperative that no more whelps be permitted to hatch. Make haste to Wormbog in the south of Deswala Marsh. Surely she has made her lair there. Track down the evil dragon's eggs and destroy them. She will never reclaim Stonewall Village, or we will never reclaim Stonewall Village if the surrounding area remains a breeding ground. As for Mach Marak, he has plans for him. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the support. Take care of yourselves out there, and take care of each other, and we will see you back here again sometime soon. Bye now.